Hi, I'm Toma Nahumi and I'm a technology evangelist here at Dell EMC. Today, I have another exciting announcement to give you and show off. Dell CSM replication module for PowerMax. CSM for replication project aims to bring replication and disaster recovery capabilities of Dell EMC storage arrays to Kubernetes clusters. It helps you to replicate groups of volumes using the native replication technology available on the storage array and can provide you with a way to restart applications in case of both planned and unplanned migrations. In this demonstration video, I will show you how to replicate an application running on Kubernetes to a remote site by leveraging the native PowerMax SRDF synchronous replication technology. As you can see, I have two PowerMax clusters running in my lab. On the left, we have the source array, and on the right, the target array. By navigating to the data protection view, we can see that those two systems are configured for SRDF synchronous replication. Now, let's connect to our Kubernetes clusters. On the left, we have the source Kubernetes cluster connected to the source array using the PowerMax CSI driver, and on the right, we have the target Kubernetes cluster connected to the target array using the PowerMax CSI driver. In order to protect our assets and provide zero RPO to our Kubernetes applications, we use the PowerMax Replication Sync Storage class. We can see the protection definition, such as remote system information and SLA, and on the target storage class, we have the opposite direction. These storage classes are backed by PowerMax replication policies, which are configured at the array level. RepCTL cluster list command provides us information about the clusters configured for replication. RepCTL RG list provides us information about the replication groups configured for replication. With PowerMax, each replication groups aggregates all the persistent volumes in the same namespace that are protected using the PowerMax replication sync storage class. Now, I'm deploying an FIO application that generates intensive benchmarking storage workload on the source site. The pod has a dedicated persistent volume to store the application data. As you can see on the right, this persistent volume has been replicated to the target array as well. For the purpose of this demo, I'm connecting to the pod and creating another file so we can check that the file exists on the target array once we initiate the failover. By running the RepCTL RG list again, we can see that the replication groups are now synchronized and in ready state. SRDF sync replication maintains a real-time copy at the arrays that are located within 200 kilometers. The local array acknowledges writes from the production host when they are written to cache at the remote array. Now it's time to initiate a failover. I'm running the RepCTL failover command and specifying the replication group and the target site. Within a few seconds, the state has changed to failover in progress. By navigating to Unisphere and selecting our storage group, we can see that the replication status is now suspended and the target device, R2, is read-write enabled to its local hosts. Now, I'm connecting to the target Kubernetes cluster and deploying the same application. Since the persistent volume is already there in writable state, Kubernetes detects the existing volumes and connects the replicated volumes which contain the data from the source volume, including the changes that I've made. Now that we're running on the target site, we can see that the file that I created on the source site exists on the target array as well. I'm running the RepCTL reprotect command and specifying the replication group and the original source site in order to start the replication in the opposite direction. Within a few seconds, the state has changed from suspended to synchronized. Now that SRDF sync replication is active again between those groups, I'm connecting to the pod and creating another file 
while I'm on the target site. As you can see, both application groups are synchronized and we're ready to initiate a failback. I'm running the RepCTL failover command again and specifying the replication group and the original source site to fail back the application persistent volume to my source array. At this stage, all I need to do is to delete the pod so it will be recreated again and connected to the disk that has changed to read-write mode again. Within a few seconds, you can see that my application is up and running, connected to the persistent volume, which contains the data from the target volume, including the changes that I've made. I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.